When you're on a financial journey like I am of building up wealth, paying off debt, then you need to make sure, you, I mean me, need to make sure that I am constantly checking in on my progress for updates and any changes. And I have a big change for me. Let me show you guys. I have a brand new tracker. Let me give you a little bit of a tour and fill in for the month of May. Of course, I'm going to be sharing this with you guys in the description down below. And this tracker is a hundred percent free. We are on journeys here to lose our debt, build our wealth, and we don't need to be spending money on a simple spreadsheet. For May, I budget $1,582 for each paycheck. May is a two paycheck month, so nothing for paycheck number three. In my reselling, I'm going to budget $200 per pay. I'm going to pay myself for my reselling account when I get my paycheck from my full-time job as a teacher. Just helps me keep everything aligned, helps me tracking that so I don't miss a week. This month for my stipend, I'm expecting some stipends to come through. So I'm going to budget $150 per pay. Once again, there is no third pay, so that's zero. I'm not expecting any gifts or a tax return or a YouTube paycheck or anything else. So all that's zero. So my total income for May that I'm budgeting for is $3,864. As I budget on each payday, I'll come back and fill in the actual column and uh, we'll keep track of it throughout the month. I'm really excited for this new tracker. I've been working on it many, many late. Very excited to get into the month of May and start using it. The only thing I, I might change for the debt area is adding a spot for the minimum payment and a spot for the interest rate. I don't have columns for any of that, so I think I need to add those in. But for right now, loan withdrawal is $261 a month, uh, no no withdrawal because there is no third paycheck. Federal loans are zero. Perkins is zero. And my private student loan is $325. Credit card is $38. I'm just seeing on the monthly um, template that I copy over for each month that I did change these columns out. So let me just go back in here and update this. So I'm actually going to change the private student loan payment. Um, the minimum payment is $325, but I'm going to pay $500. And the minimum on my credit card is $38, but I'm going to pay $125 for the month. Let's check out expenses. Okay, so my mortgage and utilities, that is $400 per pay. There is no third pay in May. Union dues, $50 or $55 per pay, no third pay. Life insurance is $28 and car insurance is $69 for the month. So total in fixed expenses is $1,007. Over here on the variable expenses, this is where I was not exactly sure what I wanted to do, but here's what I did. I took a look at Mint, which I do have linked down below, and that is connected to my cards and my checking account, and it helps to organize anything that's incoming or outgoing into categories, and it's 100% free. I've been using it for years, I think like seven or eight years now. So I went back and I saw what did I do in the last 12 months and I averaged it together and I took a little bit of a guesstimate. So for my car, I did have a car payment and I did have car insurance. So I was like, well, that's not going to work. So I had a sieve out and I thought, you know what? I am going to just guess with my car. And this is something I might have to adjust as time goes on. I get an oil change, say four times a year. That is approximately $400. In Pennsylvania, we have to do an inspection and admissions testing. That's another $100. So now we're up to 
hundred dollars for the year, not for the month, but for the year. I'm just going to write it here to keep track of my thoughts. Um, what else? I need a car inspection every so often. I think it's like $50. What else would come along with my car? I mostly like to take clean my car when I'm at home, but occasionally I will take it to the car wash. So that might be like $25 there. I'm trying to think what else. Can't think of anything else. So $575 a year on my car. Well, let's just call it $600 a year. And I think that comes out to $50 a month. Diet, Coke, or coffee. I'm going to give myself $15. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to give myself $20. Dining out. We're going to go with $50 and $50 for entertainment. For gas, we're going to go with the 100 bucks. You guys know my husband has been helping me out with that. And for groceries, I'm going to say 200 Again, my husband usually covers the cost of groceries. He does make more money than I do. So I feel like it's fair. Um, but we're just, sometimes I pay for him too. So we'll just say 200 and we'll see how it goes. We might have to adjust up or adjust down next month. For health, we're going to save $50. I can't think of anything at the moment I would need spending there. So I'm just going to leave it at $50. Home and garden is getting $80. That's $20 per week. Again, I may adjust up. I may have to adjust down. But I feel like that's a happy medium for right now, considering I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be. My nibblings. Well, my nephew is six. My niece is two. So six times four. Wait, how am I figuring this out? What, uh, what did I say for that? I was thinking six dollars a week. So that's $24 for him. And then that's $8 for her, so $32 for them. Now, that is going to include any activities that we do or if we go on an outing, something like that. I'm just sitting here thinking I might be changing my variable expenses because let's say for my nibblings, I spend up, end up spending $25. So there is $8 or uh, $7 left over, I would like to roll that into the next month. And that will definitely help with birthdays and Christmas, you know, later in the year. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a revision on my variable expenses. Okay. Self care. I'm giving myself $28 a week or $80 for the month. Shopping is $10 a week or $40 for the month and work because I love, you know, to do science. Um, it can be very expensive to do my job. Sometimes I don't have to spend extra money, but I like to spend extra money to have a more enriching experience, in my opinion. So for work, I'm doing $20 a week or $80 for the month. Seems a little bit high, but it is the end of the year and I do like to do an end of the year celebration. So that is something that will be zero throughout the summer. And then come fall, um, probably at the beginning of the school year, I'll boost that budget and then it will be close to zero for several months. Like I said, things will adjust up, things will adjust down. We'll see how it goes. I definitely want to add a differential column here and I definitely want to be able to keep track somehow so that things can roll over. So I'm going to work on that at another time. Let's go down to savings. The things that I am saving for, what account that money is going to, 
I'm going to put in a goal when I have it. I'm not quite sure what my goal is yet. And then my budget. So let's just start with $10 for each category. This is a work in progress. So if it's not linked in my description yet, that means I'm tweaking it. And once it's tweaked, then I will link it. All right, let's go through each of these categories. First of all, getting one month ahead. I would like to have an, an accessible savings account, enough funds to get one month ahead. My 100 envelope savings challenge, the highest amount that I can possibly get is $100. So we're going to change that budget to $100. I will explain that to you. Um, I did actually explain it in a previous video. I did have to put it on pause while I finished up paying off my car and then that other debt, but I do want to get back into it, especially since I'll have a little extra money now. Getting six months ahead is just getting $10. I think everything else is going to stay at $10. I would like to get a camera for doing YouTube here. Um, car maintenance is another category I want to save up for. Christmas, Luna and Orion need to have their own savings account because, man, have you ever taken a pet to the vet? It is so expensive. So they need their own dedicated account. Medical, I'm going to come back to also, I think my goal there is going to be enough to cover at least my deductible, if not a few other things we'll get into later. Then a new car fund because eventually I will need a new car, but hopefully not for like five or six years. A new cell phone, again, hopefully it will be like two or three years before I need one of those. Then vacation fund, a weekend trip fund, and of course, savings fund for my nibblings. I love those guys so much. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I see an error right now in my formulas here. So let me just fix this. It should be income minus fixed expenses, minus variable expenses, minus debt, and whatever I send to savings. Okay, so, oh, so $658 left over at the end of May. Ooh, okay. Let's go back up to the top here. Well, certainly the first thing I'm going to say is this needs to double to 250 and let's increase this to 750. Where was I at? Okay, so I have $283 left. I, I really don't want to add it to the variable expenses. I'm going to add a miscellaneous. This is going to be, um, like, let's call it emergency, miscellaneous emergency. In case like I have an emergency or I don't have enough money to cover anything or what else could it be? A miscalculation, any of the above. Let's put $80 in that fund. Now I'm left with two, <laughs> 203. Okay then. So let's change the nibblings to 32 since that is what I have for spending on them in the month. Let me save that amount for them this month. Um, let's see what else. You know what? I am going to start a cottage fund. We'll put $10 there. Um, not going to explain that one right now, but we'll get to that at another time. Let me see. That brings me 171. Now, I do want to say, I don't know what my reselling income is going to be. I don't know what my stipends are going to be or when they come through. So I think what I'm going to do is just leave 
that money there. The 171 balance that I'm going to have, I'm going to leave it there. And if I need to do anything with it, my priority will be the private student loan. I just don't know if that money is going to come in with the reselling, how things are going to sell. Some are usually slows down a little bit. And with my stipend, if I'm expecting it in the paycheck number two and something happens with that paperwork, it doesn't go through till the next pay, I still want to overdo my budget. Um, so yeah, this is where we're going to be. This feels good. And yeah, I think this is great. I'm going to make some adjustments to the debt section, the variable, variable expenses section. And once I have a chance to update all of that, then I will share it for you guys in the comments or in the description below. And it will be free. I promise you that. But I do want to make those adjustments so that it's a better, a better tool for all of us. <laughs> so, all right, guys, what do you think of my new budget tracker? What do you think of my new budget? Give me all your thoughts, the good and the questions that you might have. Did I forget anything? Let me know down in the comments below. And um, if you're excited for my new budget and this new budget tracker and you just want to cheer me on, hit that subscribe button. I'm working really hard, working full time, working part time, got the side hustle going take all the extra stuff at work that I can get that makes money. So yeah, show me some support by hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.